It's a great afternoon, PS Unions. Masantos yung karam at si kay namin. Naimbat na daw yung aming nga sanapada. Itaas po ang kamay ng mga taga-alaminos. Asinggan. Bayangbang. Bibale. We have also Infanta. Lingayen. San Carlos. Santa Maria. Ordeneta. And of course, the main campus. Iwagayway po ang ating mga kamay. My teachers, support personnel, my dear PS Unions, this is the new normal. Anda na ba kayo? Anda na ba tayo? I quote this meeting to present to you several important concerns that whether we like it or not, we need to embrace them with positive mindset in order to fulfill our mandate. Today, we will lay down possible solutions to address these challenges. What happened during the ECQ? If you could recall, the CHED Advisory Number 5, we have the class suspension in higher education institution, work suspension except for those assigned as a skeleton force, or workforce rather, and the entire zone area was placed under enhanced community quarantine or ECQ. So ano ang ginawa natin during these days? From April 14 to May 15 and extended up to July to June 16 rather of 2020, the province of Pangasinan was placed under the general community quarantine. During the ECQ and GCQ period, our faculty members employed various remote teaching learning mode of instruction. The university administration also continuously performed its mandate to serve the employees, students, and most of all, our community. My dear teachers, and PS unions, despite the ECQ, we issued a memo to somehow monitor the activities as well as the conduct of online classes. Observing utmost leniency and consideration, finding all means to reach out to our students as a response from our campus, from the respond rather from our campus executive directors, executive directors. The following data were gathered as shown in the slides. This data shows that even as teachers were affected. Despite our effort to deliver the necessary services, mahina or walang signal, walang gadgets, walang pangload ang mga estudyante, close ang computer shops, and so many other reasons. So we come up with this online meeting as we face a new semester this academic year 2020-2021. Hence, this paper is presented today here, I'm going to present the academic challenges myth, the opportunities for growth and plans of actions through transition to the so-called new normal or to the new educational landscape during this pandemic period. What then are these challenges? First, enrollment. Pwede pong mag-increase, pwede pong mag-decrease. If you notice, unemployment rate went high as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. There might be tremendous decline in our enrollment due to the economic condition of the families of our students or increase in enrollment due to transfer of students from private institutions or private higher education institutions to our university. Worst case scenario is the parents will decide na mag-stop ang kanilang mga anak at huwag natin silang pilitin at yan din po isang katubilin ng ating pong chairperson, Secretary De Vera because of the fear, walang vaccine at this point in time or walang security. Second, readiness of faculty members for the new mode of instruction. Most of our faculty members have not experienced or has 
limited experience on the use of remote or online teaching mode. All faculty must be able to embrace the new normal. Tunay po ito, tanungin po natin ang ating mga sarili, handa na ba tayo dito? As an initial orientation, we encourage you teachers to watch, to watch a series of webinars conducted by CHED and other organizations. This webinar will give you an additional knowledge on the different online and flexible learning modalities that you could adopt in your teachings. Third, internet connectivity of both faculty members and students. The survey results show that a bigger percentage of our faculty members have limited connectivity so with our students. Here is the result of the survey conducted by the, by the Statistics Center on the readiness on online learning of our faculty members and students. Results show that 81.5% of the students have available devices for online learning, while 48.1% have internet connection at home based on the responses of 5,860 samples. Meaning, majority have available devices at home, but more than 50% have no internet connection. So here, this data shows that there is an average connectivity rating in terms of accessibility, reliability, and speed. There is a technique on how we could test the speed rate of internet. And I know most IT literates knew how to do that. Dito sa ating bansa, compared to Asian countries, tayo po ay isa sa mga pinakamabagal ang internet speed. Mas mataas sa South Korea, sunod ang Singapore. This is a possible because the next data here shows that the cost of internet services has an average of 1,900 per month as concluded by 35.3% of the respondents followed by 1,430 pesos with 26.6% and 1,285 with 23.9% who confirm these rates. So meaning, kailangan meron tayong 1,000 pesos na mahigit ang bawat isang estudyante na gagastusin para magkaroon ng internet services. Higit ito sa kalahating kaban kung ito ay tutumbas natin o ating susumakin. The survey also revealed that 48.9% of the respondents ay gustong may isa o dalawang oras ang duration ng klase in a day, which means a good input sa ating scheduling. Also, a significant rate of 43.5% of the respondents preferred their class to be scheduled ng alauna hanggang alas 5 ng hapon, which is the time na medyo nakakanto at minsan po ay mainit. While 34.2% ay gusto naman ko ng 8 o'clock sa umaga hanggang alas 12 ng hapon. Bakit kaya? Siguro, ito po ay observation natin with your sleeping schedule during the ECQ. Kumbaga, may nagbago nga ba? So, further, cited top three problems encountered by our respondents as revealed from the same survey are the following. 82% limited or no internet connection. Next, 64.8% unclear assessment of learning and 29% is on adaptability struggle. This slide also presents the data for faculty members who indicated that our teachers most of time, most of the time rather, use their smartphones, their laptop, and desktop in delivering flexible learning strategies via instant messaging apps like Messenger, Viber, WhatsApp, 
Discord, WeChat, Telegram, and many others. This result manifests that the work from home scheme was really followed by our employees. However, kahit na may gadget sila, it still revealed that 70% pa rin, or 503 of our faculty members have limited or moderate internet connectivity. This is something that we need to address. Next challenge is on the ICT resources of our students where only few can afford to buy their own ICT resources for online learning. 81.5% of our students from the survey answered that they have available devices for online learning at home. Next one, to complete that story, 84% are using cell phones while only 6% have desktop computers. Also, 75% uses mobile hotspots while only 22.9% uses broadband or personal mobile data. This was confirmed by 81.7% who uses prepaid phones and 19.3% avails of Wi-Fi or free data from their respective phone lines. Another challenge is the balance engagement of our students. If students who are not ready and full online learning may be disconnected with their professors to some extent. There will be limited open discussion with them as compared to those who can manage to go on online learning. What is the implication of this? Kapag di kayo nakikita o nagbimit ng inyong estudyante, nawawalan sila ng motivation considering that the supposed interaction to make learnings productive because of their unprepared and full online learning. The quality of teaching and learning depends on the quality of interaction and engagements of the teacher and the learner. Next is the mass training of faculty. The training of faculty to learn the new trades of delivering the lessons is a must. This is a challenge to the faculty members who are not into ICT or don't even know the basic computer operations. All faculty members must be able to learn and adapt to the new mode of instruction as a requisite to the new educational landscape. There is really a need to conduct mass training for teachers. Quality of instruction depends on the capability of teachers to impart knowledge via these mentioned modalities. Kaya wala pong senior citizen. Wala pong bata, lahat po tayo ay dapat matuto sama-sama at walang maiiwan. Another concern that we need to face is on the admission requirements and policies or policy issues. Given the age restrictions in the community quarantine areas, the conduct of college admission tests using a standardized plastic ability test to screen new students to enroll in our various academic programs categorized as board and non-board programs was cancelled. Instead, the GWA or the GWA will be used as a basis in determining whether the student applicant will enroll in board or non-board program. Another challenge is on the structure of our curriculum. Existing curriculum are developed for heavy face-to-face -face mode of instruction. How we're going to modify existing curriculum that fit or adapt to the flexible learning. Examples, we have the learning outcomes, activities, assessment, and other forms. Another one is the age restriction. In the event that the national crisis or the health crisis will not be lifted, employees who are 60 years old and above, as well as those with health risk and pregnant women shall still be under work from home arrangement. The major concern is when they are required to report when their services are indispensable. Hence, their safety may be compromised. Compliance to physical distancing in offices and classroom. With the current office and classroom sizes, 
these are big enough to observe the social distancing requirement of at least 1.0 to 1.5 meters. Limited facilities for the observance of the minimum health standards. The call of time is a regular practice of proper washing of hands, use of sanitizers, and other co coughing etiquette. However, some campuses do not have washroom, and some have washroom but not functional or not properly maintained. Next one, handling of incoming and outgoing documents prior to quarantine, documents are received and released without taking into consideration how these documents are transferred from one office to another or from PSU to other agencies and vice versa. At this point in time, we need for a protocol to follow to consider that the transmission of COVID-19 could be avoided. Next one, or I think the last one, is coming in of university visitors, guests, students, and other clients. University visitors, guests, students, and other clients visit the university at their own convenient time. Given the social distancing policy, the age restriction, there is a need now to systematize the recording and regulation and the coming in of this group to the university offices and premises. And the last one, we have the financial requirements. Taken collectively, the biggest challenge is the financial requirements needed to put in place the necessary intervention to address challenge from 1 to 13. Despite the support mentioned challenges, they gave us opportunities for possible adaptation of this normal. These challenges shall be viewed as part of the continuous improvement process of the university. Remember that the top PSU tagline, this is one of our innovative culture of looking into the silver lining of these pandemic challenges and maintaining still the core values that each of us PS Union should possess. First, and the decrease of enrollment. We take this as an opportunity for our faculty members who will be given reduced teaching assignments to actively involve in research, extension, production, write modules, and many related tasks. On the other hand, in case of increase of enrollment, the opportunity for the increase in UNIFAS collection, which in turn could be used for expansion of facilities and procurement of additional resources and the possibility to improve our operations. Second, since all higher education institutions are not ready with the new normal, Opportunities for faculty capacity building and the new instructional mode will be full blast. For instance, we at PSU will be conducting series of training on the development of our study course guides, online delivery mode, the use of the LMS, and many others. Third, there are available funding support for proposal that focus on the development, production of materials such as ethanol, which could be a good avenue for partnership with other agencies. Fourth, local government units in the province are also very supportive in the implementation of the new paradigm in the delivery of instruction. Preparation for remote teaching learning is an opportunity to explore and maximize the advantages of online teaching, modular teaching, and many others. Number six, given the modification to be made in the curriculum to suit the requirements of flexible learning, the learning outcomes can be reviewed and enhanced to maximize the acquisition of the need to have competencies. This will ensure the curriculum's responsiveness to the requirements of flexible learning. Seven, 
internet connectivity in the university. LGUs and communities will be given priority to ensure the efficient implementation of the flexible learning teaching. And number eight, the CSC guidelines shows that one alternative work arrangement applicable for senior employees is work from home. Innovating new mode of doing and completing their assigned tasks and responsibilities, considering their new work environment is an opportunity for them to improve their performance. The promotion of the new organizational culture that reflects heightened their work commitment given the new alternative work environment may also be realized. Also, implementation of the physical distancing policy posed as an opportunity to reconfigure the existing offices and classroom to comply the distance requirements. On the other hand, it is also an opportunity to look at the task in an office that can be done at home so that we can limit the number of employees report, reporting in the offices. With the policy and observance of minimum health standard, it is an opportunity to formulate quality management process and strictly implement health and safety protocol on proper hand washing, receiving and releasing records, documents, as well as in receiving guests, visitors, or outsiders coming in the university and the inclusion of new programs, projects, activities to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Chat advisories and memo from other agencies serves as a basis to realign and reprioritize the PPAs that are responsive to the need of the current crisis. So where do we go from here? What are the plans of action with these challenges and opportunities in the university? The following are the set of action to be undertaken to cope up with the demands of the new normal. First, all faculty members shall undergo the training on the use of LMS from July to August 2020. Schedule will be set by the Office of the Vice President for Academic Affairs. Second, orientation on the selected LMS platform will also be done for the students still under the Office of Dr. Manuel. Third, all faculty members shall improve their course syllabus following a new format that will serve us in writing the course or study guides for students and instructor's guide for the faculty as critical material for the new normal. Fourth, a radio station will be established in Lingbeen to support the complement of face-to-face and other learning platform for remote teaching. Fifth, classes for the first semester is tentatively scheduled on September 1, 2020. Sixth, Adoption of the face-to-face -face and remote mode of instruction, if so warrant, or if not clear online teaching. Seven, modify the term examination to two-thirds. We have only to have midterm and finals. Eight, establish of the university test bank. Ninth, full operation of the newly created and approved Council of Deans and Chairmen and then to help our needy students the adopt a student project will be launched. Next one, propose for the, for the adoption of the three alternative work and arrangement or any combination thereof, namely the work from home, a skeleton workforce, and our day or rather the four day compressed work week. 11. Reconfigure, restructure the offices and classrooms in accordance with the physical distancing requirements. 30. Implementation of the protocol in handling records, documents, and in accepting visitors. 
realign the budget to finance the PPAs related to the implementation of the new educational landscape and the requirements and the observance of the minimum health standards. 15. Submit proposals on ethanol production facility, face mask, and face shield production. And also realign the top level quality objectives and functional objectives to accommodate the requirements of the new normal. In this time of national crisis, let us work together for the betterment of all. Our students must be given the right education at the right place, and our employees must be given the appropriate working environment that is in accordance to the policies approved by the national government. The pandemic taught us that there is no rich or poor educated and uneducated, we are all equal. As government employees, we are more lucky considering that we receive all the benefits due to us despite the fact that we are in ECQ or ECQ situation. It is now the time to share the blessings we have received to those in need. At this juncture, Join me to extend my gratitude to the following who have helped survive these struggles even before the ECQ period and who, are, and who are still working for us, ensuring the health and safety. The national government and who are still working for us, ensuring our health and safety. Brother, una po pinasasalaman natin ang national government. Ang AITF team who formulated the guidelines. Of course, ang ating pong Presidente, President Rodrigo Duterte, for formulating the guidelines which benefiting millions of Filipinos. The provincial and local government, led by Governor Pogi Espino, mayors, congressmen, local and barangay officials, serving the province for massive spread of COVID-19. At higit sa lahat, at ating mga health workers, men in uniform, sa lahat ng mga frontliners, pati na rin ang mga PSU frontliners, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagmamahal. We would like also to acknowledge the support of our Board of Regents, headed by Commissioner Adamat, Designated Chair, and Secretary Popoy de Vera, Chair Chairperson, PSU Top Management, special mention to our Crisis Manager, Dr. Ruby Cruz. And of course, we will not be here today if not because of the divine protection of our Lord Creator who remind us to be faithful to Him and to trust Him wholeheartedly. This too shall pass. All these struggles will end soon in Jesus' name. The new normal requires us to learn new skills and acknowledge correspondingly the culture of giving and commitment must be internalized by each of us. We need to learn to unlearn the old practice of teaching, adapt to the new ways of doing things, the teaching learning process, the administrative related tasks, production, research, and extension responsibilities and putting at the center the quality assurance mechanism to ensure the continuity of improvement in the workplace. Our journey towards the new normal is challenging, but there are opportunities for growth, for transformation. Let us then continuously evolve and realize the quality outcomes that we always strive of. Together, as one PSU family, the trademark, the PSU cares shall always guide us. Let us hold on in the commitment to share, to learn, and to nurture. Remember, we are all one in this mission. Iisang direksyon, iisang atikain. As one PSU, we heal and learn as one. 
Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. God bless. God bless everyone. God bless the Philippines. God bless Pangasinan State University.